So the goal of metacognitive strategy training is to improve performance on goal-oriented tasks. And the idea is that if you have extensive practice with these strategies, then the patient or client will be um, start to develop habitual use of those strategies. And then through that, it may help to improve their attention, if not improving their just their performance on a task. One of the really nice things about this is that the metacognitive strategies can be devised for activity and participation level tasks and goals, which is I think most of the time what we're really interested in is getting them to be able to be more successful in activities and participating in activities of life that they're interested in. Many of the tests have poor ecological validity, so they make sense and they test kind of this theoretical construct, but it may not link to functional behaviors. And another thing that's really important is that because they're standardized tests, you know, designed to be done within a time frame in a quiet room and things like that, they most of them don't take emotional or stress factors into account. And if you remember at the beginning, I indicated that the limbic system, the motivation and, and emotion system is linked into the executive function system. So another critical component about these tests is that they don't take emotional or stress factors into account. So you may have a client similar to the example I gave you who may be able to do good verbal problem solving and describe what to do if they couldn't find their house keys. But they may not be very successful in an actual situation where they get home and they don't have a key to their house and they have to figure out what to do in that situation where they're experiencing it. They may be getting worried or stressed out and they have this additional emotional component on top of just the verbal problem solving. For denial of deficit, this really suggests that there's a psychological component because if you deny that you have a deficit, then that means that you have some awareness of it, but you are not willing to accept it if you're denying it. And while I think within the field, we know what we mean when we, see, when we say denial of, def of deficit, I think is, can be really problematic in dealing with families because if you say, oh, he's denying it, then that's very different from he really is not aware or he has a reduced awareness of the deficits that he has. Now there are many forms of awareness deficits. One is a deficit at an informational level that they really don't have knowledge of their deficits. This one really isn't a deficit of awareness, but more a deficit of knowledge where they haven't been given information or they haven't had a chance to experience the, the deficit. And so they may not be aware just because they don't have the information or the experience they need. If you believe that the deficit is at this level, then the best treatment is to provide education and provide experiences so that they have a chance to see the deficits firsthand and experience them. And that may be all they need for some patients. Then there are some external strategies that work extremely well. Oftentimes they work very well for prospective memory deficits. Having calendars, clocks, alarms, lists, notes, diaries, some sort of organizational system, all of these things work really well. And I think nowadays, it's becoming less and less stigmatizing because pretty much everybody has a calendar and alarms and lists that they keep on their smartphones. And so it's not stigmatizing to have to write things down to remember them. And those are really good strategies for people with memory deficits.